Hi friends, welcome to Bookish Bliss, our virtual book club. Every week we will dig into a section of chapters in our favorite books. Let's get started. Hello, hello everyone, and welcome to episode 12 of Bookish Bliss. We have a lot to discuss today. Yes, this week we will be covering chapters 56 through 69 of A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Mass. There will be spoilers for the whole book since we'll be discussing the final chapters. So for this episode and the next, you do need to read the whole book to listen, which I cannot even believe that we are discussing the final chapters of A Court of Mist and Fury. Wild. I waited a long time to do this book, <laughs> and it's already over. I know. Time flies when you're having fun. Yes. <laughs> well, Amanda, like every week, what are you drinking today? I don't have wine today, Megan. <gasps> and it's because I already had bought Tito's and Cran this weekend, so. Beautiful. I guess it's that. nice to mix it up every once in a while. Yeah, it is. It is. You know what I'm not doing? What? Mixing it up. I am <laughs> drinking a Strongbow again this week. Nice. It was a hoot for everyone in our comment section. Oh, my God, yes. But to everyone's disappointment, I did already open the <laughs> bottle today. <laughs> and I want to let you know that I opened it in one go. Yes. And it's because we weren't recording. Yep, I know. We should have recorded it for proof, but... They'll just have I to know. take our word for it. <laughs> I know. You saw. You saw. I did. So. I did. It's true. <laughs> I promise. <laughs> All right. Well, yes. cheers to you, darling. Cheers to you. Cheers to the end of Akamath and our second book. Oh, my book. gosh. Yay. Yay. Also, I just want to apologize before we get started. My voice is not the best today. So if I sound like a robot, I apologize. <laughs> yes. Megan is battling a cold, but we will push through. <laughs> yes. All right. Now let's get started with the good stuff and break down Akamav part six. Over to you, Meg. Please summarize this set of chapters for us. All right. I'm really excited to do these summaries for you today. It's the last summaries I'm going to be doing for this book. And as you know, later on the episode, we'll be going a little bit deeper about what happened in the plot of these sections. Yes. Chapter 56, Cassian says, it's about damn time, which is so Lizzo of him. I def think she would be on the top of his playlist. Cassian and Reese start a round of Mortal Kombat to work off some of Reese's tension for the newly mated bond. The inner circle pledge their loyalty to Feyre and they are heading back to the mortal lands to meet with the queens. Chapter 57, only two queens show up to the meeting this time. They are just as bitchy and horrible as the first meeting, but after they show Valoris, the Golden Queen leaves behind their part of the book in secret. Chapter 58. Valoris is attacked. The Mortal Queen sold them out and the city is being attacked by Highburn. The Golden Queen is sacrificed and Feyre becomes the defender of the rainbow. But can we also note that before the attack starts, Feyre and Cassian were walking back from watching a symphony performance? <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 59, the epic showdown we've all been waiting for since book one between Feyre and the Ator occurs. Cannot wait to discuss the final moments of the Ator. Good riddance. Yeah, bye the fuck bye. Chapter 60, the group is exhausted and can no longer stand on their feet after dealing with the aftermath of the Highburn attack. They want to retaliate, so they do a group rendition of Let's Get Down to Business from Mulan, and they plan how they are going to go into Highburn and nullify the cauldron. <laughs> Should we sing? <laughs> Let's get down to business. I can't sing today. <laughs> That was a good reference. I love that. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Chapter 61. Feyre is in so much armor, I'm surprised she can even stand up straight, but they travel to the yucky lands of Highburn and start their well-laid-out plan. Asriel and Cassian are taking out guards left and right, and we end this chapter with seeing the mighty cauldron for the first time. Dun, dun, dun. Chapter 62. Feyre decides to say to hell with the carefully laid plan that Cassian and Asriel spent months putting together, ignoring Amran's war about putting the two halves of the books together.
together and makes up her own plan, which of course was just an utter disaster and they end up being caught by Jurian. Wild. Chapter 63. The King of Highburn was 10 steps ahead of our inner circle and Jurian was just a distraction. Resand winnows in before they all get locked into the castle and their powers are stripped away. Azrael gets shot with a poisoned ash arrow and fucking Lucian and Tamlin show up. Oh my god, I cannot wait to discuss that. Those fucking two. I cannot. Chapter 64. Feyre is like, no, absolutely not. Turn around. Full U-turn at the sight of Lucian and Tamlin. Tam Tam made a bargain with the king that for the return of Feyre, the king would have access to Springcourt lands when he invades Perithian, as well as breaking her bond with Reese. But the most horrible part of this chapter is the mortal queen show up with both of her sisters bound and gagged. It was just jaw drop after jaw drop. (laughs) Literally hit after hit in these chapters. Chapter 65. The mortal queens want a demonstration of the cauldron's powers because they want to be immortal and rule forever. Horrible people. Mm Mm-hmm. Tam and Lucian try to be helpful for once in their life and try and stop the Archer and sisters from being dunked into the cauldron as experiments. But alas, they are unsuccessful and Nesta and Elaine become high fae and apparently Elaine is Lucian's mate. Hmm. Side eye. That outstanding performance as she pretends Resand had her under a spell and that she just broke free of it. The king breaks the bond and my heart also shattered (laughs) during this scene. Yes. Chapter 67. Feyre passes out, not an act, and Resand is panting on the ground. With the spell undone by Feyre, the inner circle makes an epic escape with her sisters in tow. The spring court is about to leave Highburn as well, but not before one last threat by Feyre to the king and Jurian. She's a bad bitch and she's ready for revenge. Yep. Chapter 68. A Resand POV? Wild. Sadness, heart-wrenching grief from the group, Cassian and Azrael on the brink of death, and Amran is shook. Who knew Amran could be so astonished by anything? But wait, not only is the mating bond still intact, according to Reese, mm-hmm. but Feyre is the high lady of the night court, and she is now a spy in enemy lands. Oh my god. Holy shit. I was fucking right. <laughs> Which brings us to our last chapter in my favorite book ever, chapter 69. Feyre is ready for revenge, and you know her Taylor Swift playlist has vigilante shit playing on repeat. Mm-hmm. She is about to take down the spring court and everything Tamlin holds dear, and it's going to go up in flames. Wow. Great summaries, Megan. And what a crazy ride the end of this book has been. It could not have been more epic. No, I agree. It was (laughs) already ready for the next book. (laughs) Yes, very ready. (laughs) But before we can do any of that, we do have an entire episode still left to film. (laughs) So (laughs) I'm going to hand it over to you and you can update us on our characters. Yes. So I'm going to start with Resan for our character section today. At the start of the section, Resan was acting like a savage. The wild snarl that ripped out of him was like nothing Feyre had ever heard. Cassian looked at him and knew exactly what had happened. The bond was accepted. They mm. fought for hours. They all knew that Reese had to get this feral energy out caused by the mating bond. Mm-hmm. Resan tells Feyre that his mother gave him that ring she retrieved from the weaver to remind him that she was always with him, even during the worst of his training. When he reached his maturity, she took it away. It was an heirloom of her family and had been handed down from female to female over many, many years. His sister wasn't born yet, so she wouldn't have known to give it to her. But his mother gave it to the weaver and told him that if he were to marry or mate, then a female would either have to be smart or strong enough to get it back. And if the female was in either of those things, then she wouldn't survive the marriage. He promised his mother that any potential bride or mate would have the test, and so it sat there for centuries. Feyre did end up grabbing her own ring from the weaver. (laughs) She sure did. But I was also just thinking when you were saying that, when was Reese's sister born? Yeah, I don't know. If he was off training, how old was he? Like, I forgot how eight. Was it eight or nine? I think he started at eight. Did she really give an eight-year-old? A ring? I don't know. It's like, how old was Reese when the sister was born? 
And then how old was she really when Tamlin's family killed her? That's sad to think about. Like she was only a kid. She was probably fully grown at the time of her death. I just wonder what the age gap is between the siblings. Well, don't we know that a 70-year-old Faye is actually still a child or just coming out of childhood? I don't know. I thought that's what it was. I remember saying that in a world building section before. (laughs) <laughs> I know. Yeah, I don't know because I don't know how long it was that Reese was in the Illyrian camps for growing up. Yeah. I don't remember. Sure. I know it was a long time, but I don't think it was 70 years. No, I don't think he was in the camp for 70 years, but I think it was Alice telling her that fey children grow up a lot slower than human children and they wouldn't be fully developed and grown, aka adults, until they were like yeah. 70 years of age or something. Yeah. I don't know. It's just so wild. I wish we knew more about Reese and sister. Like, I, I just need to know more about her. But yeah. anywho. <laughs> <laughs> anywho. Tangent over. Yes. So that's just where Reese and head's at, at the beginning of the section. Obviously, much, much more happens with him. But I'll let you discuss that in the plot. And he gets mentioned a lot in the world building section. So we're just going to leave it right there for now for him. Okay. Those are his big moments. Yes. His big character development moments. Yes. So on to Feyre. When Feyre and Rhysand return from the House of Mist, Amran says to Feyre, we will serve and protect. Feyre says, thank you, but only wants them to be her friends. And more chimes in with, we are, but we will <laughs> always serve and protect. And they officially welcomed Feyre to the family. Mm-hmm. Feyre turns into a badass warrior again. And uses the water from the Sidra River to make wolf after wolf that ran fast and brought down the Atars by shoving water down their throats and drowning them when they flooded Valeris. She splashed the Atars flying in the sky with water and froze them and watched them fall and shatter. Feyre, curse breaker, defender of the rainbow. Feyre shoots through the sky, winnowing after the Ator that she knew and recognized tried to escape. She finally landed atop him, wrapped herself around, and burst into a living flame that burned everywhere she touched. She then stabbed the Ator's ribcage with a dagger, once for Claire, once for Rhysand, and once for herself. She went onto the ground and heard the crack and splatter of the Ator across the cobblestone. She got a new nickname in this section of chapters as well. Mm-hmm. They were a spellbreaker, and I can't mm-hmm. wait to get into that section. But how badass was she in that section? She's always badass. She's the only one that doesn't believe that she's a badass. And even Reesan says it at the end of the book. She sacrificed herself because she doesn't even feel worthy enough. Like that she's the most indispensable one out of the group. Yeah. And I think as a reader too, when the main character is underestimating herself, we kind of underestimated her too. Mm -hmm. As we're reading it, you know what I mean? Like, I was nervous when they started coming. I was like, holy shit, what the hell is going to happen? And then she just flips a switch and she's like this crazy maniac that just starts attacking all of these Ators at once when she's never even been faced with more than one creature at a time. Yeah. Just so badass. Yeah, I guess that's what happens when it's from her point of view and we can only feel her feelings as she feels them. Yeah. (laughs) Like, it makes me nervous knowing that she underestimates herself. Is she going to freeze? Is she going to fight? Is she going to fly? Like, what is she going to do? And she fucking fights and she fucking wins. Yeah, we'll find out when she lets us. (laughs) Yeah, exactly. (laughs) All right, on to the mortal queens. Only the eldest and the golden-haired queens come this time, with just as many guards, however. They saw the city of Valeris for their own eyes and revealed a letter that Rhysand had wrote to them, confessing his love for Feyre, but still did not agree to hand over their half of the book. The queens said they would consider and return to their palace to deliberate with their sisters, but the inner circle already knew they were going to say no. That is, until Feyre catches Rhysand staring at a box on the golden-haired queen's chair. He opened it and there was a note that laid atop the golden medal of the book. It said, I read your letter about the woman you love. I believe you and I believe in peace. I believe in a better world. If anyone asks, you stole this during the meeting. Do not trust the others. The sixth queen was not ill. Ooh. Yeah. The queens were in Highburn though, but not all of them. And they were interested in immortality from the king and the cauldron in their agreement to work together but wanted to see if that worked first before they tried. They needed proof. 
And they got it. Yeah. Well, the fifth queen is dead because they sacrificed her. And then the sixth queen is God knows where, if she's even alive at this point. And you just have these dirty four that want immortality and to rule forever because they're just greedy. They don't actually care about the humans or the human lands. They just want power. I just don't understand how stupid you have to be to believe the king of highburn is going to be a better asset to you and i get it they got to them first but uh, like how dumb can you be he was the one that enslaved the humankind don't you know the history yeah i think they're just trusting jurian but because of everything jurian did to fight the fae in the war and if Jurian is saying, don't worry, the king's not going to touch the continent. He just yeah. wants to invade Perithian. Then they're going to trust Jurian, I think, a little bit more than they would trust more, even though their ancestors were friends probably more with more than with Jurian. Right. But, yeah. you know, all they know is what they read from history books and things that have been passed down over 500 years, which is a long time to forget really who the King of Highburn actually is. And I think they're just True. too naive and too greedy with power to understand that, hell no, the King's not going to stop and not try to invade the continent to get his slaves back. He has a tiny yeah. sliver of land that he was trying to expand in the first war. He's not going to just be like, oh no, like I'll only take some humans and take over one part of the lands. No, he's going to want yeah, the entire no. continent. Absolutely. And I think, which we'll discuss a little later, that is still his plan mm. to take over all of the continent, he, even though he made this air quotes deal Yeah, he, <laughs> with the mortal queen. He's going to be like, I owe you nothing. You're a human. I'm a fae and I'm a king and yeah. I'm powerful and you're not. So yeah. yeah. Exactly. They're just stupid. Yeah. So on to Nesta and Elaine. Rhysand tells Nesta and Elaine that it is their choice whether they wish to remain there at their home or come back to Prithian with them to Valeris. <laughs> big mistake. Yeah, big mistake. Nesta left a decision up to Elaine, who said she could not leave. He assured the sisters that his sentries will be there and remain unseen and unfelt. You know what? What? I bet you, and I'm sure we'll find out in the next book, I cannot remember for the life of me right now, but... Right after he says this, like, my sentries will be here to protect you, Valaris is attacked. And I bet they left the lands that were protecting Elaine and Nesta to go fight Highburn. Yeah. And that's why they got in and got them. Because if they were being protected by recent sentries, how did they get in? Yeah. And I don't think they ever expected that Valaris would be under attack. So they probably just called all forces in. Yeah. Wow. You're right. That's what I was just thinking. If they were there, how did Highburn get into the house Yeah, to steal them? Well, Highburn must have known that and planned it perfectly <laughs> to get them. Yeah, it was almost like Valaris was like a distraction. Yeah, exactly. Even though they probably reveled in obviously destroying. It was a distraction, but also a statement, I think, too, that the queens were not working with you. They were working with Highburn. With that, yeah. yeah. And that we have the power to break through all your wards with this cauldron. Yeah. And <laughs> if we could do that to your wards, watch us what we do to the wall i know yeah exactly it's definitely a statement wild yeah. anyways <laughs> back to the centuries they will look after themselves should the girls change their minds one would be waiting in a room every day at noon and midnight for them to speak he told them that his home is their home its doors are always open to them next thing we know they're dragged into high bird gagged and bound wild ianthe tipped off the king on whom favor would appreciate having with her for eternity he considers it a wedding present for both favorite and tamlin but even tamlin didn't want this the king convinced her to help him by painting a picture of Prithian free of high lords where high priestesses would rule with grace and wisdom. Another power hungry yeah. bitch. I fucking hate her. Yeah. I knew she was working with the king, but like this was not on my bingo card. <laughs> yeah. Not only is she working with the king, but she's working with the king to overthrow all of the high lords in yeah. Perithian. And then we're going to go back to the spring court and it's all going to be hunky dory between Tamlin and I know, like, like, hello, she's you're included in that, Tamlin. Yeah, he's just so stupid. So stupid. Anyways, she probably manipulated even. him to think that he would be the only high lord untouched or something stupid. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like, you're my friend, Tamlin. Yeah. <laughs> no, you would be the first one with a cut to your throat. Yeah, literally. Amran has defended across the Sidra River from the rainbow where Feyre was defending when Valeris was under attack. She used her dark power to spin illusions straight into the soldiers' minds. 
They believed mm-hmm. they had fallen into the Sidra and were drowning. They believed that they were flying a thousand feet above and had dived fast and swift for the city only to find the street. The crueler ones, the wickedest ones, she had unleashed their own nightmares upon them until they died from terror, their hearts giving out. This scares the shit out of me. I am so <laughs> glad we are on Amran's good side. <laughs> yes, it's so good that Amran is on our side yes. and not against us. I just love these little bits of info we get about her. It's just a little trail of hints to figuring out what she is. Yes. And she is not happy at the end of our section when Reese lets Feyre go back to the spring court, but. Nope. She's not happy one bit. Yeah. Can't wait to see how that plays out. (laughs) I know. I wonder in the back of her mind if she was thinking like, well, I'm second in command at this point, Feyre's not here. Reese is out of his mind. Should I just step in and yeah. overrule this and go get her? Yeah. But she doesn't. That's true. But technically, I feel like Feyre would outrank her now. Well, yeah, that I, I know. But like with Feyre not there and then Reese, she's like clearly thinks he's out of his fucking tree. Yeah. <laughs> Wild. I mean, I still can't believe she's going back to the spring court. Yeah. I was not happy about that. Yeah. I mean, I don't think anybody's happy about that, (laughs) but what must be done must be done. Exactly. Yeah. Jurian is alive. He was ordered Mm -hmm. to distract them while the inner circle was in Highburn while the king worked his spell. They won't leave the castle unless he allows them or if they're in pieces. Yes. Jurian wants... Reese dead, Mm -hmm. and he also wanted to know who Reese was closest with because he never found out the 50 years he was under the mountain because Amarantha never got that info out of anyone. So this is like been nagging at Jurian for a very long time. So now he finally has his answers. Crazy. Though he seemed to know them, so I'm not sure why – the king says Jurian wanted to know who he was closest with because he makes the comment to Cassian like, oh, finally moved up the ranks, have you? Yeah, he like, definitely he... knows them. Do you think, though, that it was because of Miriam and Draken? Like, it sounds like Miriam and Moore were friends. Yeah, I think maybe Jurian's just tricked the king of Highburn to say, I don't know who they are. Like, I want to know who they are just to get... Moore and Cassian and Asriel in the castle to see if they could give him the information he needed to get Miriam. Yeah, that's true. You're right. So it's probably just a lie on Jurian's part because, again, he hates the Fae. So him working with the King of Highburn is just to ultimately get what What he he wants. wants. Yeah. And same for the King, though. Like, I think they're going to backstab each other left and right. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Yeah, they definitely have different agendas. Yeah. We finally meet the King of Highburn. He thought the trap was so easy, he honestly was a bit disappointed that they didn't see it coming. Asriel was shot in the chest with an ash arrow coated in blood bane as leverage and ordered the crew to follow him to the throne room. The throne room had fey lights that slithered along the bone white walls. The windows looked out to the crashing sea far below. His throne was assembled from human bones. Yeah. Wild. The King of Highburn had an agreement with Tamlin that Feyre would work with him after she was returned to Tamlin and the bargain with Rhysand would be diminished. Jurian and him thought that they could get two birds with one stone as he wanted to know where the High Lord of the Night Court's friends were and wanted him dead. And we just talked about that, how that was a la 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 <laughs> or a suspected lie. <laughs> suspected lie. Yeah. The King of Highburn says that he does not wish to infiltrate the continent. Another lie for sure. He wants to, air quotes, work with them and the mortal queens and sent Jurian to convince them to be his ally. And it fucking worked because they're just as dumb as Tamlin, those stupid queens. Yeah. And I think Jurian is a sweet talker. I think yeah. he's very good with words yeah. and what, when he wants something accomplished. I think they do describe him as somewhat handsome. Yeah. I think he definitely is a smooth talker and there's is guess two, what he wants. Yeah, there is two women in this story so far that have fallen for him and that have been yeah. deceived by him in some way, I guess. So yeah, just going to keep adding to the list of these dumb women. <laughs> they're not good. They're, they're just, not dumb. They're just gullible. <laughs> yeah. Naive. Naive. Because yeah. they think he's a good guy, but he's actually not. Yeah, exactly. And finally, in our character section, I want to throw up when I say their names, but Tamlin <sighs> and Lucian. 
are oh, fucking Lucy. working with the king. Well, Tamlin's working with the king. Well, Lucian is by association. I won't loop Lucian into that. <laughs> we must disagree then because I am looping him in with that. Okay. And Lucian and Elaine are mates. Hmm. We have some thoughts about this, Megan and I, so we'll get into that later in the plot section. <laughs> yeah, I just don't believe it. Yeah. And we will talk about why we feel this way. Megan has convinced I will me fully. talk about what I see in this book only. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. And before we get to that, though, let's go over the world building section. We're going to yes. start in Valeris today. Mm-hmm. Specifically when it is attacked. <sighs> sad. So sad. Valeris had been littered with a sky full of ators, long-limbed, gray-skinned, with serpentine snouts and razor-sharp teeth. They were King Hybern's warriors, and they were shooting ash arrows at the people of Valeris. Cassian tapped the siphon on each hand, and black armor began unfolding and slithering up his wrists, his arms, yeah. replacing the tunic that had been there. Additional siphons and more armor appeared, layer after layer, spread across his entire body. Cassian and Azriel both tried to raise a shield to protect Valeris from the Ators, but those squirmy bastards were able to get through them. How badass, though, just watching him just, like, in a normal oh. outfit, all of a sudden yeah. just, like, Iron Man's up and me- is in this armor. Yeah, it totally gave me, like, actual Batman vibes. Batman yeah. is my favorite of all the superheroes. It's the only movies I will watch. And yeah. this was totally, like, right out of a Batman movie for me. <laughs> So funny. But yeah, so we've already discussed how Feyre defends the rainbow and how Amran defends the other side of the Sidra River. So all of our inner circle is pulling together here to destroy these Ators. Mm -hmm. And the soldiers they're carrying. Yes. And it's so sad that they're shooting these innocent people too of Alaris. I know the scene where, and I'll talk about it later, where that lesser fairy, I don't even like to say that lesser fairy, but she's holding that rusty pipe in her hand, protecting the people in Mm -hmm. her store. And that's all she had as a weapon. Actual tears. Yeah. Tears. Like they definitely never thought that was coming. No. And I knew it was a bad idea. To tell the queens that, but... I know. But just to see them all or people stepping forward outside of the inner circle to fight Highburn and protect yeah. the city was just... You just course, know what yeah. good the people in the city are. <laughs> On to the Book of Breathings. Amran cracked the code, but the news was not good. To nullify the cauldron's power, you must touch the cauldron and speak certain words. Amran had written them all down for Feyre on a piece of paper. The two halves of the book must remain separated, Amron warned. Okay. If she had the spell written down on a piece of paper, why did Feyre have to bring the two halves of the I book? I don't know. To the cauldron. That means I was so pissed. No I was like, sense why isn't she fucking listening to Amron? Or why did the books just stay with yeah. Amron if she had the spell in her pocket? Those are two valuable artifacts or whatever you want to call it that the king of Hyburn will want if it's there. And I don't know why we're bringing these yeah, two you're pieces right. into enemy territory when we just have the spell that we need. Because even if he got the book, they would still have the spell on the paper. Yeah. And so there was no reason for the book to be there, except obviously to set up what happened, which is to fuck everything up. But there was yeah. no reason for the book to be there. The book could have stayed with Amran in Valaris. Yeah. You're right. You're absolutely right. Amron did warn, though, that if you put the pieces together, the blast of power will be felt in every corner and hole in the earth. She won't just attract the King of Highburn, but she'll draw enemies far older and more wretched things that have long been asleep and should remain so. Yes. Which also scares me because she put that book together. So what the fuck are they going to have to face? Yeah. What did she wake up? I don't know. I yeah. still don't know. But she probably woke something up that we're going to have to deal with. Oh, she definitely did. <laughs> If Amron's saying it, I believe it. (laughs) She doesn't warn people for no reason. That is true. She doesn't waste words. Yeah, no. The gang is going to Highburn, but Amron is staying behind to defend the city if needed. Their plan is to find the cauldron and destroy it. And if they can't destroy it, then they'll steal it. Amron warns that the king of Highburn is old, very old, and not to linger there in Highburn. No one listens to Amron. No one listens to her. Ever. No offense, but she is one fucking scary bitch. Why do you think she's lying yeah, to you? old, 
older than everyone, wiser than everyone. Yeah. She knows what she's fucking talking about. She literally is a history book walking. Yeah. And history repeats itself. Yes, which the queen should also remember that tidbit because they're clearly forgetting everything their history books are telling them. Exactly. They're just being cowards, those queens. Greedy. Which even brings our point that we'll make later <laughs> even more interesting. But I'll leave it for the prediction section. We've already talked about Amron warned that the cauldron makes the book seem harmless. If the spell fails or if you cannot move the cauldron, then just get the fuck out of there, she basically yeah, says. Yeah, leave. <laughs> The crew had found a round chamber beneath the castle and in the center of the room atop a small dais sat the cauldron. The cauldron was absent in the presence of darkness and whatever the darkness had come from, but not life, not joy or light or hope. It was the size of a bathtub forged of dark iron. Its three legs crafted like creeping branches covered in thorns. It had the power to transition a strong-willed human into fae. Whoa. Whoa. And we've already seen this a couple of times Mm -hmm. with Mm Jurian and Elaine and Nesta, but will the queens be strong-willed enough? We will discuss and see. Yeah, we'll find out. But I think the saying is, fuck around and find out. (laughs) Yes, that has been quite a theme of our podcast. (laughs) Fuck around and find out. (laughs) Megan, since you're sick, I will take on the singing today for you. Oh, thank you. In your favorite section. Thank you so much. Magic. <laughs> magic, magic, magic. I got the magic in me. Woo! That's all I can add. <laughs> I hope I did it justice. You did so good. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go again with our fast bullets of magic. If I already talked about it, I didn't include it in this section. And there was so much going on that I probably did miss something. So... I'm sorry in advance if I did. (laughs) But here we go. So the magic in this section included winnowing, a ton and ton of winnowing. The book talks and is feisty. The young, beautiful queen gave the book of breathings to the inner circle. Favor describes this half as chaos and disorder and lawlessness, joy and despair. Mm -hmm. The inner circle worked long hours after the attack on Valeris to reward the city and provide protection again that was stronger this time. Favor shields out Rhysand completely while she is hunting the familiar Ator. She apologized for it, but he says, sorry, be impressed. That shield, what you did to the Ator, you could have been killed, but you defended my people. You defended Valeris. Oh. I love I that. Know. I love He's that only name. been telling her to work on her shield since the beginning of this fucking book. So literally. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, I am impressed with those shields. Hell yeah. If he can't get through it. Yeah. No one yeah. can. Feyre feels the cauldron's power and is drawn to it and can hear the book of breathing saying, Home, bring me home. Mm. She hears a lot of other things that ends up being Jurian instead, but <laughs> Whatever. Whatever. Feyre unravels the spell that kept them trapped in Highburn. Not once, but twice. Mm-hmm. Feyre unleashes herself and shows the king of Highburn that she is a child of all seven courts with powers to match. Yeah. Power, white and unending and hideous, barrel into the inner circle. Cassian screams as his wings shredded under talons of pure magic was the most horrific sound Feyre had ever heard. Power hit them again and again. Tamlin tried to stop the king from granting eternal life to Elaine and Nesta, but the king's white-hot magic slammed into him, shoving him to the ground, leashing him. Lucian surged for Elaine and the cauldron, but the king's power had leashed him too. Elaine was forced into the cauldron's tub and dunked underwater. As if it had been tipped by invisible hands, the cauldron turned on its side. Black smoke coated water dumped out into a cascade. Elaine had become more beautiful and her ears were now pointed beneath her hair. The cauldron then righted itself. Nesta clawed and screamed her rage, her defiance, but eventually experienced the same fate, dunked underwater and dumped out of the cauldron as High Fae. Mm-hmm. Feyre's spellbreaker breaks the king's spell, holding them to the castle, and then puts a show on and nails, nailed it. it. The king thinks he removes the mate bond, but he merely removed the bargain and tattoo from Feyre's hand mm-hmm. and arm. And lastly, Feyre blasts a hole for the inner circle to escape with her sisters. Yep, she brings down the wards of the entire castle. Castle. The entire castle. She is one strong bitch. Yeah. And that ends our magic and world building section. Wow. Yes. So I will let you take over for the plot, notable lines, and some assumed foreshadowing. All right. Before we do that, let's just take another drink. Let's do it. 
So before okay. we start our plot section for chapter 56 and on, we just want to mention that in the last episode, we lost out on our talking points in chapter 55 that had to do with a lot of their sexy bits, which is so yes. <laughs> sad. We did get into detail about it, but we just want to mention we do know that it happened. We did talk about yeah. it, but it was lost in the recording somehow. Yeah, unfortunately. But... I tried to save as much as I could of it, but it wasn't much. But to recap, <laughs> they had lots and lots and lots and lots of sex. Yes. Everywhere. <laughs> Everywhere. All over the there house. There was paint. <laughs> there was a bathtub scene. There was more on yes. things on the bed. Another bathtub yes. scene. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Um, which brings us to chapter 56. Reese and Winnows him and Vera back to the Illyrian camp after all their time in the House of Mist. Cassian and Moore were waiting for them when they returned and Cassian said it's about damn time and I really think he started doing that TikTok dance to Lizzo's song when <laughs> they showed up just to piss Reese off I see it I see Reese it. is on edge and all the other Illyrians start taking women and children and shooting them into the skies and they know something big is about to go down Cassian is taunting Reese and yes and this is my notable line for chapter 56 page 542 Favor says, when he bashes your teeth in, Cassian, don't come crying to me. <laughs> Which is just so perfect. She's like, fight it out, but don't fucking bother me when he kicks you yeah. ass. <laughs> <laughs> they start fighting each other and Favor realizes Cassian knew exactly what he was doing because Reese was on edge and needed to work off some steam before he would feel safe to go back to Valoris. He doesn't care about destroying these Illyrian camps. He's like, you guys, but he's not going to go yeah. and destroy Valaris. Moore tells Vera they would be at it for a while and welcomes her to the family. When they are done fighting, Reese and Vera have another quick, dirty sex scene in the kitchen before he winnows them back to Valaris. Bow, chicka, wow. Ooh, he's like, clean yourself <laughs> off. What, sir? God damn. You, oh, you God. clean her off. <laughs> Be a gentleman. <laughs> Later that night, the entire inner circle is at the House of Wind, and they all rose as one when Feyre and Reese enter the room, and they say, we will serve and protect. As Amanda said earlier, she's like, oh, this is nonsense. Knock it off. We're friends. I don't need the formality of all of this. And mm -hmm. they're like, okay, yes, we will, but we'll serve and protect you. And Reese's like, Ugh, are we done with this now? Because, you know, he is not about formality either. Yeah, no. This is not Tamlin. Yeah. Amran says to Feyre, I heard you grew fangs and killed some Highburn soldiers. Good for you, girl. Because <laughs> when Feyre was rescuing Reese from when he was shot down from the sky, yeah. Reese is still on edge and he says he would fight them outside if needed just based on all the looks and stuff going on in the room and Pharaoh makes a joke about Reese needing an unusual amount of coddling which makes Azrael choke on his wine. Pharaoh just looks at Azrael and Reese almost loses his shit but then he apologizes for it. He's having a really hard time keeping the mating yeah. bond under control. Jeez. He had it under control when Pharaoh hadn't accepted the bond yet and the food hadn't been given and it wasn't official official mm -hmm. but now that it is official official he's like look at her and you're gonna fucking die <laughs> yeah <laughs> and when he looks at her he has a much different idea. oh yeah they can they're just like look at each other like Magnus. Magnus. Yeah. Then after dinner, they all flew besides Amran <laughs> to the mortal lands to go for their second round in discussions with the mortal queens. Chapter 57. They are back in the Archeron family home and Feyre is once again in a gown and a crown, but this time she's holding hands with Reese. This time, though, only two mortal queens show up. The ancient crone looking one and the golden queen are the two that show up. They noticed that Feyre is now holding Reese's hand and said it seemed what he wrote in his letters to them were coming true. Mm -hmm. The queens tell them that the other queens would not come because of the insults they received from Nesta the last time. The Golden Queen says that they do not see them working together 
when it comes to this war, that there is a distinct line between their people and the Fae people, which is just such bullshit. One, we know the Golden Queen is lying now, and it's just for show. And two, they need to just realize they need to work together against Highburn, but obviously we know now that they're so shoved up Highburn's ass, it's not even funny. Yeah, and they're so cowardice that they would rather be on his side and believe him than fight against him. Yeah, I think the Golden Queen makes a comment that Nesta and Elaine are no better than the children of the blessed because they're just believing everything that the Fae are telling them. And it's just like, no, they're not. They actually know what is good for the people and they are smart and you're not. (laughs) Yeah. The queens do seem to be a bit jealous after the comment of Favor getting to be young and immortal forever, which, oh, foreshadowing. (laughs) Yep. Foreshadowing. (laughs) And then the queens want to know if they brought the proof that they requested. Feyre does not want Reese to show them Valaris and to give up their secrets. Feyre also says, is it my sisters who are human, especially Elaine who is wearing an iron engagement ring, proof enough that we are trustworthy as they stand by our side? And the queens just think, no, you're just foolish. She's foolish to risk her engagement by helping them. Feyre, who we now know, is keeping a small sliver of her mind open to Reese so that they can talk back and forth now that they are officially mated. He tells her that war is a sacrifice if they do not gamble Valaris then they risk losing Perithian which is just obviously true but it's just so yeah. so sad yeah they then show them Valaris because the queens will basically not accept any other proof at this point they're like we do not care yeah. show us what we need because now we know why they yeah. want this because they just want to destroy Resand. yeah when they are done they say that they will speak to their sisters and get back to them the group is shocked they were saying we don't have the time Time to be deliberating. We need the book now. Mm-hmm. Nesta is pissed because she knows the queens are not going to give them the book. She demands more than once that the queens hand the book over to Feyre, that there is not enough ships if they are preparing for war to save the land here. And Mm -hmm. the old crone says, well, maybe one of your winged friends will carry you across the sea, which is such an asshole comment. Yeah, these bitches. And here's my line for chapter 57, page 553. Cassian says, 500 years ago, I fought on a battlefield not far from this house. I fought besides human and fairy alike, bled beside them. I will stand on that battlefield again, Nesta Archeron, to protect this house, your people, I can think of no better way to end my existence and to defend those who need it most. Ah, I can't even make the squeaky noise. (laughs) More foreshadowing of them too. Foreshadowing. (laughs) Foreshadowing. Then the queens leave and they're all shocked. But Feyre notices Rhys staring at where the Golden Queen was sitting. The Golden Queen had left the box with the second half of the Book of Breathings inside of it. This half of the book, as Amanda said, was chaos. And Reese tells Nesta and Elaine that they can come to his home in Valaris and be protected. And Nesta looks to Elaine saying that it was her choice. And Elaine is just looking at her engagement ring and she's like, I cannot leave my fiance. Yeah. And then Reese is like, nope, don't worry about it. Just say the word and you can come home. And Nesta looks at Feyre at the end of this chapter going, now I know why you painted the night sky. Wild. (laughs) How does she know everything? Nesta Nesta knows everything. Nesta sees all. She's always observing. She always knows what's going on. You cannot fool Nesta. Chapter 58. They return to Valaris right away with the book, wary that someone would quickly come after it, especially after the mention of the sixth queen. Dot, dot, dot. Then it's basically, it's a waiting game. Two more days pass and Amran has still not cracked the code. Reese and Moore went back to the Court of Nightmares to return the Veritas before her dad noticed it was missing. The Illyrians were now camped across the mountains, preparing for battle. Everything is kind of starting to fall into place. Mm -hmm. Feyre comes to the realization that even if she nullifies the cauldron, there will still be a war. Feyre is hoping that she could see the Golden Queen again, which is very interesting. Cassian and Azrael have been staying with Feyre because Reese was away, and he basically said even if she kicked them out of the house, that they would just sleep on the roof. Like, not only yeah. do they feel the need to protect her because she's Reese's mate, but 
they're friends and they just want to make yeah. sure she's okay. Yeah. Which is nice. Yeah. It's very different than the centuries that were yeah. in the spring court. And I think she does understand the difference. Yeah. And I think it's just going to take her time to disassociate from yeah. – the spring court centuries, you know. Yeah. We get some flirty notes being passed back and forth between our newly mated mates, mm-hmm. which I think mentioned something of, I miss the size of your wingspan or whatever inside of me or something <laughs> to that effect. And he's like, of course you do. <laughs> I love that. I love that so much. He's like, obviously. Duh. Yeah. <laughs> Cassian and Pharaoh went to go see a performance of an ancient revered Fae Symphony, which is just fucking hilarious to me. Yeah. <laughs> and on their way back, they have a discussion about Nesta, which is, I feel like, long overdue. Mm-hmm. Feyre is grateful, though, for the promise that Cassian made to her sisters. And Cassian is just like, why are you telling me all of these things about Nesta? And Feyre's like, you know, she is grateful deep down. But the next time she pisses you off, which I know that she will, <laughs> just yeah. know deep down that she is grateful and appreciates everything you said and she'll never forget it. Which we know she will. <laughs> Yeah, she will not forget. No. They then feel a tremor in the world, in the land. I don't know. (laughs) And (laughs) they are both instantly on alert and Cassian starts preparing for battle. He becomes Batman. (laughs) I wonder if they can feel the shields or the wards being breached. That must be like the tremor. Yeah. And they both start scanning Valaris. And that's when we see things flying in from the sea. And Feyre says, please tell me that those are birds. And Cassian's like, well, I know it's not the Illyrians on patrol because they don't even know Valaris exists. Yeah. Then we realize that this is an invading host. Cassian passes Feyre his Illyrian blade and a fighting knife and hands them to her. Cassian throws out a shield, but there are just too many creatures to keep them at bay. They were a legion of Ators, and they were holding Highburn soldiers. They just kept punching through Cassian's shields. Cassian threw up another shield, but the creatures started going to the outskirts of the city where the shield wasn't reaching and starting destroying and terrorizing people there. Cassian was yelling at Feyre to go back to the townhouse, run back now. As a hole was ripped through Cassian's shield, he throws her to the ground to shield her and they hear a crunching thud. They dropped the Golden Queen onto a fucking lamppost impaling her. Yeah, that was brutal. And the actor is like, regards from the mortal queens and Jurian. Mm-hmm. Like, he doesn't even say the King of Highburn. They no. just say, he says, from the mortal queens and Jurian. The mortal queens would rather their own sister, probably who was tortured before they dropped her on a lamppost. Yep. You gotta be some kind of fucking evil human to let that happen. Like, at least lock her up and don't let her out until you get your way. Like, I could see that even happening, but to let her fucking be tortured and died, these bitches need to die. Well, they said that was her punishment for betraying them. Yeah. I can't. Anywho, Feyre wants to help the Golden Queen, but it's too late. And Cassian wants her to run home and he shoots into the sky to start to defend the city. He's like, I can't stay here protecting you. Please go home. I have yeah. to go defend the city. But Feyre's like, this isn't just an attack on the city. This is an extermination. We mm-hmm. see Amran taking down Highburn soldiers left and right, but it wasn't enough. Feyre realizes the rainbow was undefended. Mm-hmm. She heard screaming. And she knew her path. Yes. And this is actually my notable line for chapter 58, page 564. I flipped my Illyrian blade in my hand and winnowed into the burning and bloody rainbow. This was my home. These were my people. If I died defending them, defending the small place in the world where art thrived, then so be it. And I became darkness and shadow and wind. Yes. 
And she fucking kills it. Yes. She <laughs> went out to the edge of the rainbow and she starts slicing through highburn soldiers. She sees the young green skinned life with a pipe in her hand trying to defend the store and the people inside it. The highburn soldiers were laughing and teasing her. Mm-hmm. So fear is like, fuck you. Goes yeah. to the Sidra, stomps her foot in the river, and the river answers her. And this is where she creates her water wolves to attack the highburn soldiers. And when they took to the sky, they grew wings and became falcons and hawks and eagles and basically turned them to ice. And then Feyre used her power to just fucking shatter them. She's yeah. like, poof. Yep. Feyre spots the Ator that she knows and hates trying to get away. Her winged friends kept missing him and none of her friends would get there in time to stop the Ator from returning to Highburn. Reese is then subtly in her ear demanding to know where she is and she says I'm exactly where I need to be before she takes off after the Ator. That's fucking right Feyre. You get that motherfucker. Yeah. She's like I'm exactly (laughs) where I need to be baby. Love you. Bye. (laughs) Yeah. See you at dinner. See ya. (laughs) See you later. Which brings us to chapter 59. Feyre blocks Reese out of her head so she can focus on killing the Ator. She literally said, love you. (laughs) Bye. And puts her shield in place so he can't get to her. (laughs) Yep. She saw in the distance, rushing towards her, a mighty darkness that was devouring the world. And where the soldiers in its path caught up with it in the darkness, they did not emerge. And she knew that that was her mate, Reese Ann. She called him Death Incarnate, Night Triumphant. Mm-hmm. What a badass motherfucker. I mean, they both are. <laughs> I know. The most powerful couple. I love it. To ever Strong exist. Strong together. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> She winnows right on top of the Ator and plunges a poisoned ash arrow into it. She then wraps herself around the Ator and she became a living flame. So she is just like burning him alive at this point. And they start to free fall. He deserves it. As they fall, (laughs) she takes her dagger in her hand. And Amanda kind of went over this a little bit, but I just have to say it again. She stabs the Ator once and says, this is for Reese. She then stabs it again and says, this is for Claire. And then she stabs the Ator one last time and says, and this is for me. Yes. So powerful. And this is actually my notable line for chapter 59, page 570. I kept my mouth beside its ear, close as a lover, as a reflection in a pool of blood became clear. I'll see you in hell, I whispered, and left my blade in its side. (sighs) I I just love that part. I'll see you in hell. And then she- see you in hell. (laughs) Winnows out of, let's go with the Ator, winnows out as the Ator smacks the ground. Splats. Splats. Dead. Dead. She then, where you belong. Exactly. She then is kind of like backed into, I don't know, just some wall. I don't know where she is at this point. <laughs> and wall. Reese finds her and kisses her, kind of pulling her back into herself and reminding them of who they are. He then says, Feyre Cursebreaker, the defender of the rainbow. I and she that. hugs him so tightly and just starts sobbing. And even though she says his city was basically on fire, he held her until she could face what they had to do next. Aww. He just cares about her so much. I know. I just love them so much. And it's just like <laughs> in those little tiny moments. I guess it's a big moment, but he's just like there for her. And it just like yeah. makes my heart melt. I know. My ice, ice cold heart. <laughs> Amanda so knows how much ice is around my heart. I'm always like, yeah. Bleh. <laughs> <laughs> yep, it's true. <laughs> Chapter 60. Valaris was now secure. They had remade the wards that the cauldron had broken, and they were all dirty and exhausted and sprawled out in the living room of the townhouse. Feyre had stayed in the rainbow, helping the wounded and dealing with the casualties of the attack. Cassian said, even though they are secure now, Highburn could still come back. And who else did the queen sell that information to? Who else did they yeah. tell about Valaris? Did they tell other courts? Did they tell... I don't know, other parts of the human world. Who knows? Yeah. And Amran tells the group that she will stay and defend the city when they go to Highburn to nullify the cauldron. And they decide that they will eat and sleep. And Azrael finally speaks and says, and then 
we will retaliate. Yeah. Fuck yeah, Shadow Singer, so fucking sexy. I can just like <laughs> hear him saying that, and it just yeah. makes me ooh chills. <laughs> mm-hmm. I'm like, I love and you. His like stare, like yeah, like we will then retaliate. we will retaliate. And I'm like, yeah, <laughs> I just want to straddle you, Azrael. <laughs> Ride that cowboy, Megan. <laughs> I will. <laughs> Reese never came to bed that night. Sad. She found mm-hmm. him sitting on the roof and she tries to comfort him. He tells her that the shield and what she did to the Ator was impressive, but he tells her that she could have been killed. And of course, immediately Favor goes on the defense because she thinks yeah. he's going to treat her the same way Tamlin did. And she's like, are you going to scold me? And he's like, I'm not going to scold you for defending our people. And he's like, I don't even deserve you. Yeah. And mm-hmm. Fager tells them that they deserve each other and that they deserve to be happy. Look at Fager having a breakthrough. Yes. For once, she's the one not denying it and pushing for it. I love it. Yes. It's about goddamn time. <sighs> like Lucian said. <laughs> Cassian. Oh, like Cassian said. Lucian. Oh, sorry. I'm an idiot. You don't even like Lucian right now. I hate you. Amran cracks the code to the Book of Breathings the next day. So she got down to business as well. Yeah. She says, in order to nullify the cauldron, Feyre would need to be touching it and to speak a certain set of words. She warns them not to put the two pieces of the book together. She was very <laughs> specific when she said, I'm pretty sure she said it in every language that she knows. She said, do not put the pieces of the book together. Don't do it. She's like, repeat back to me. What are we not doing? We're not putting the two pieces of the book together. Apart? Yes. Together? No. No. (laughs) She's like, I know you couldn't read like six months ago, but we don't put the books together. Gave it back and severed (sighs) it. It wasn't even like a battle for her. It was like, oh, put it together. She's like, okay. Okay. (laughs) Like, oh. I can't. If she does do that, she says that a power will be felt and it will not just attract the King of Highburn, but creatures older and deadlier than they would ever want to deal with. Yeah. Azrael advises that they know where the cauldron is in the castle and that they've been spying and planning for this trip. They want Reese and Moore to winnow them off the coast and then they will fly the rest of the way while Reese stays. They want to be in and out and destroy the cauldron before the king even knows that they had been there. Reese says, are you asking me to stay outside while my mate goes into his strongholds? And Azrael is adamant. He's like, yes, this is how the plan needs to go. Reese then gives Favor the choice. And here's my notable line for chapter 60, page 577. And I realized, I realized how badly I've been treated before. If my standards had become so low, if the freedom I've been granted felt like a privilege and not an inherent right. Reese says, well, we may be mates, Feyre, but you are your own person and you get to decide what your choices are. Feyre decides they are going to Highburn. Yep. Later that night when she was going back to her room, she realized she didn't know she was to go to her room or to his because the night before, (laughs) Reese never went to bed. Yeah. With Tamlin, they kept separate rooms and Reese says, I just see him just like leaning against his door like so sexy and he's like well you can pick which one because we're sharing a room and i have the bigger bet (laughs) (laughs) reese then transfers all of fair stuff into his room with magic reese then hands her a small box and inside of the box was his mother's ring and amanda told us about what the ring was and why the mom gave the ring to the weaver Mm-hmm. He promised his mom that any potential bride would be given the test. And he says that the trip to the Weaver was vital to see if she could detect objects, but he also picked that object out of selfishness. Yeah. I'm so glad he picked it, though. Me too. <laughs> so she's like, I won my own wedding ring without even being asked if I wanted to marry you. And he's <laughs> like, well, I guess you don't have to wear it if you don't want to. And she says... When we get back, she will put the ring on and get the bond declared and get married and have a huge party in front of all of their friends and family. And Reese is like, well, what if I wanted to go a step further than that? And she says, Mm -hmm. I'm listening. Oh, yeah, baby. He definitely goes a step further. (laughs) Definitely does. When we read this, you were like, what, have babies? And I was like... (laughs) 
<laughs> like just wait. <laughs> like duh, Amanda. I'm you surprised you weren't like foreshadowing you are about foreshadowing, <laughs> and then you fucking fuck up. You know. Sometimes <laughs> my brain's not there. I don't know. I think we were just so into the moment of like yeah. reading it. Yeah, and I was fighting you to do the notes. I couldn't write my notes. <laughs> Megan was like, no, we got to keep going. And I was stressed. <laughs> I never want to do my notes. Never. Chapter 61. Feyre is dressed in so much armor with lots of blades on her person. Just a few hours ago, she had felt such overwhelming happiness being in Rhysand's arms. But now they were off to battle. Amran warns them that the King of Highburn is old and not to linger. Again, do not linger. Do not fuck around and find out. Do not. Says Amran. As the books get closer to her, one said, hello, lovely. And the other part said, wicked liar. <laughs> Amran says to Feyre directly, directly <laughs> to Feyre, looking in her eyeballs, said, the cauldron makes the book seem harmless. If the spell fails you and you cannot move it, leaf. Mm -hmm. It's a very specific, straightforward instructions. Like, I'm not really yeah. sure how that could be difficult. She literally says it's going to make the book look harmless. Yeah. And the book is not harmless if you put it together. <sighs> Do not put the book together. <laughs> <laughs> we should have made that a drinking game for this episode. I know. <laughs> Anytime we said that. Everyone go back and take shots every time <laughs> yeah. I said that. Matter of fact, I'm taking a sip. Yeah. They all then look to Resand and make their vows. Yes. And this is my notable line for chapter 61, page 581. Cassian bowed. With my life, High Lord, I'll protect her with my life. Reese looked to Asriel. He nodded, bowing, and said, with both of our lives. Mm-hmm. I love them. Me too. They are now traveling to Highburn. They have this planned out so well that they are flying in during a guard shift. As they get closer, the book seems to be getting anxious and saying, home, take me home. She can feel the cauldron. So even if they didn't kind of know where it was, Feyre knows exactly where it is. Yeah. Asriel went inside of the castle first and killed the lingering guards that were still there. They started descending into the dungeons and kept heading down and further down, and she started to get nauseous the closer that they got to the cauldron. Mm -hmm. She pointed down and is like, it's in there. So Cassian goes down and gives them a low whistle, telling them it was safe to come down, and they enter the room where the book says, home, home. Cassian was standing in a round chamber beneath the castle, and in the center of the room was what we've been waiting for. The cauldron. The cauldron. I have to admit, I know we get the description in the next chapter that we're about to cover, but I did not fucking see it as a bathtub. No, <laughs> I thought I it was like a little pot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> like at the end of a rainbow, like a lucky charm sky. Or like, like you little pot. Or like you see like a witch's cauldron, like at yeah. Halloween. Yeah. Yeah. No. But it's a fucking bathtub. It's massive. <laughs> Yeah. Chapter 62. We get a lovely description of what the cauldron looks like, even though Amanda already gave that to us, so I'm not going to go over it again. And mm -hmm. Moore is already anxious. She's like, Feyre, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. And this is just mm -hmm. like reminiscent of Feyre grabbing the first half of the Book of Breathings with Amran back in the summer court, which yeah. also doesn't go to plan. No. So when that happened, I was like, mm, something bad's going to happen. I already know it. Oh, for sure. Azrael told them to listen and they could hear that the cauldron had a heartbeat, which is wild. Yeah. Feyre steps towards it and inside was nothing but an inky swirling black. She touched it and felt pain and ecstasy and power and weakness and it was all flowing into her. She felt like it was the map for creation. She is getting ready to say the spell, but then she feels the books inside of her jacket pocket. The book halves were whispering to her to put them together. And of course, she listens to the books and not Amberin, who looked her right in the eye and said, do not put the books together. <laughs> 
And she's like, Amran is wrong. That's She literally thinks that. She's yeah. like, Amran is wrong. While they are apart, their power was not whole and not enough to take on the power of the cauldron. And that may be true, but she just needs to say a spell from the book that Amran has already interpreted from both halves. Yeah. I think she forgot about that. <laughs> Who knows? We never get another mention of that piece of paper ever again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's completely forgot. Yeah. Moore tries to stop her, but it was too late as she put the pieces on top of each other and a silent ripple of power howled out her ears and then there was nothing. Moore's like, are you fucking kidding me? I'm pre- <laughs> what did Amron say? I'm pretty sure Amron said, do not put the two halves of the book together. <laughs> yeah. Wait, what did she say? <laughs> she said, do not put the two halves of the book together. <laughs> Cassian's like, okay, well, let's hold up. Give her a minute. (laughs) Even though she's being a fucking idiot. Yeah. She said she felt like she was the book and the cauldron. And they were all flowing into each other with no end and no beginning. But she's like, I memorized the spell. So what? she didn't even need the piece of paper with her. And two. Or the book. The book. (laughs) Just as she was about to say them, strong hands pulled her away. And there were steps from above. And Azrael puts Pharaoh behind him. And then a man steps into the room. Mm Mm-hmm. And this is my line for chapter 62, page 587. Stupid fool, he said to me. Jerrion, I breathed. Dun, dun, dun. Fucking Jerrion. It's just going to keep going from Your here. Your little finger and beady little eye <laughs> motherfucker is back in full form. <laughs> chapter 63. Mm-hmm. Jurian is now taunting them, specifically Cassian. He's like, oh, I see that you've gotten a higher rank now. Mm-hmm. And Reese appears at Feyre's side and takes the book from Feyre and tucks it into his own jacket. Jurian says the last time that he saw Reese, he had been warming amaranth the sheets. And Reese was like, oh, that's interesting that you could remember what happened when you were just an eyeball in a ring. <laughs> Jurian wants to know where Miriam is. He knows that she is not dead. So Moore says, yes, and this is actually my notable line. Yeah. 463, page 589. Where did you take Miriam? Moore says, away from you. I took her to Prince Draken and they were mated and married that night you slaughtered Clithia and she never thought of you again. (laughs) (laughs) And Reese knows we need to get out of here. We need to get out of here quick. So he grabs Favor's hand. They had seen enough and they try to winnow out, but they can't. And Jurian's like, (laughs) like the little (laughs) shit that he is. He had been sent as a distraction, so they would not be allowed to leave now unless the king allowed it or they were dead. They couldn't Mm -hmm. even use any of their powers. She couldn't even feel the bond between her and Reese. Mm -hmm. Jurian is blabbering on about how it was so awful to not be able to sleep or drink or eat or breathe or feel for 500 years. And he had to be constantly awake and forced to watch everything that Amarantha did. Boo hoo. I know. Poor Jurian. Jurian's like, your suffering will be long and thorough. And Reason's like, ooh, how delightful. (laughs) (laughs) Like, he's been through worse. Yeah. All of a sudden, there is a new person that enters the room, and it is the King of Highburn. We get to finally see this Mm -hmm. motherfucker. He finally makes a goddamn appearance. Jurian then shoots an ash bolt through Azrael's chest. The king said that the trap he set for them was too easy, but they had no choice to go with the king or Azrael would be dead. Any mm-hmm. sudden movements from them and Azrael would be killed. They enter his throne room and the king says out loud to someone we don't know, says, I've upheld my end of the bargain. I expect you to uphold yours. And mm-hmm. out of the fucking shadows enters Tamlin and Lucian. These goddamn bastards. The scream I screamed the first <sighs> time I read this book. Me too. <sighs> I was like, I was <gasps> like, no fucking way i did not just read that i did not expect them to walk out of the room me neither i thought the queens would or maybe ianthe but not them i did not think of the queens but i thought ianthe would be there but i also thought she was working against 
Tanlin as well. Mm. Not that she was working against them, but I thought maybe she would be working with the king in secret. Mm. Which I guess she kind of still was because yeah. they had no idea about the sisters that she tipped off. Sarah. Yeah, Tamlin had no idea what Ianthe was doing behind his back. Yeah, but I'm sure mm-hmm. Ianthe knew that he teamed up with the king. Yeah, for sure. It was probably her idea. Yeah, probably. <laughs> and there was a line that Resan did say earlier that was like, Tamlin will stop at nothing to get what he wants. Like, it's unimaginable what he would do. Yeah. And I still didn't think... That it would be him working with the king. Like, that just blew my mind. Yeah, because we know how much he hated Amarantha and how much he hated the king of Highbird and never even trusted Amarantha when she came back in saying she wanted peace. Tamlin was the first person besides Rhysand to be like, uh, 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 this isn't right. There's something wrong here. So Mm -hmm. it is kind of unimaginable that Tamlin would take these extreme steps to get Feyre back. He's like lost his mind at this point. Yeah, delusional, which we already know he is, but like he's fucking extra delusional now. Yes, which brings us to chapter 64. Rhysand yeah. was still as death at Cassian snarled. Tamlin was 20 feet away from them, and Feyre realized, though, that the knives that Tamlin wore were Illyrian hunting blades. Interesting. Also, Tamlin got a haircut. <laughs> <laughs> Good for fucking him. I know. Feyre realizes that Tamlin was working with the king of Highburn and she is shooketh. <laughs> yes. So was I, Feyre. Though Lucian stops Tamlin from moving closer to Feyre as Feyre keeps saying no. I think that was probably to protect Tamlin because he knows he's seen her powers in action already before. I think he saw the mating bond way before Tamlin did. I think Lucian Girl. sees everything, and I think that's why Lucian knows Feyre is fucking full of shit. So yeah. I think he sees them standing there now, because before when Lucian saw her, she hadn't accepted the mating bond. They yeah. hadn't made it official yet. But now, here they are, and even though Rhysand is staying fully still, and he is tricking the King of Highburn and Tamlin at the moment, I think Lucian knows. Yeah. And he's like, Tamlin, stop. That metal eyeball, you can't get nothing past it. Yeah. <laughs> Resand looks to Tamlin and says, what was the cost? And Feyre is like, what have you done? And the king answers for Tamlin and says mm-hmm. that he made a bargain that gives her over to Tamlin. And Tamlin agrees to let his forces into Perithian through the spring court and then use it as a base when they take out the wall. Lucian is refusing to meet Feyre's gaze. I really don't think Lucian wants to be there. I think Tamlin probably bullied him into going. Yeah, but still. I know. I don't know. Maybe Lucian was like, maybe I can do something to stop this. We don't really know what Lucian's thinking in his head because we don't have his point of view. Exactly. That's true. And I should give him the benefit of the doubt, but I'm just fucking pissed at him still. I know you're angry with him. Like when Feyre is literally telling you right to your face and I get the whole hewn city mirror image. Like you can't really see Valeris in the good side of the Night Court, but she's literally saying we already talked about. She didn't mention Tamlin. She didn't mention Ianthe. She was talking directly to him that he was enabling the behavior and he didn't help her. And that is what bothers me the most. He's still was like just come like just come with me but we like, do have you. to say during all these interactions lucian not once tells Feyre to come true he tells tamlin to stop more than once mm-hmm. so i think he's just there to make sure tamlin doesn't die i think that's yeah. the only reason why lucian is there yeah tamlin is ignoring everyone and just looks at Feyre and says her name as an order he's just like Feyre, the audacity fucking God damn stupid wolf man. I hate him. <laughs> <laughs> she doesn't move. The king then says that favor was very difficult to get a hold of. And he also informs her that she is also a part of the agreement and that she would also be assisting the king during his invasion of Perithian. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. She's like over my fucking dead body. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Fucking right. I'm going to kill you all. Lucian is glancing between all of them and his face is paling and he's whispering Tamlin's name. Like he knows. He knows. He knows. He's like, Tamlin, Tamlin. Mm-hmm. 
Feyre, instead of moving closer to Tamlin, backs away towards Rhysand. We then learn that Jurian wanted the High Lord of the Night Court dead and wanted to know who his friends were because they had never been revealed during the 50 years under the mountain, which I think is fucking bullshit. Maybe he wants Rhysand dead for whatever reason, but I just don't think that's a thousand percent true. And... I think that he just wanted to use them to find out information on Miriam, like I said earlier. Yeah. No, that definitely makes sense for sure. The king says to jury, and you can do whatever you want to them. Because really, like, the king doesn't want anything to do with the rest of the night court that's there. He just is to facilitate Feyre going back to the spring court. Yeah. Feyre says that she'll not be going anywhere with Tamlin and the king's like well you may think differently once my final part of the bargain is done which is to break the bond between her and Rhysand and Mm -hmm. that king says well Tamlin can't have a bride that runs off to another male every month yes and here's my notable line for chapter 64 page 595 my voice cracked as I said to Tamlin still at the opposite end of the crude half circle we formed before the dais don't. Don't let him. I told you. I told you that I was fine. That I left. You weren't well, Tamlin snarled. He used the bond to manipulate you. Why do you think I was gone so often? I was looking for a way to get you free and you left. Delusional. He's so delusional. He does not listen to a word she says. Yeah, she's like, I didn't leave because Reason was manipulating me. I left because I was going to die in your house. Yeah, if anyone's manipulating her, it was you, Tamlin, that she was like this weak thing that needed to be hidden from the world instead of used as a powerful weapon to defend what she believes needs defending. Yeah. Tamlin ignores all of this and says, come home with me now. No. Feyre. <laughs> like no yes no this is like a mom and a toddler at the park it's time to go yeah no no hey bro get over here no (laughs) like grow the fuck off tamlin reese was barely moving or breathing to keep them from sensing the mating bond between them but illusion already knows Mm -hmm. you're so right Feyre starts gently stroking the power and telling the spell you have no hold over me She tells Tamlin that she will go back to the spring court only if they leave her friends alone and let them go. All while she's trying to get the spell unlocked. Mm -hmm. Tamlin is like, but they're monsters. And that's when her power unleashes as Tamlin lunges for her. She winnows out of his reach. Tamlin stumbles and Rhysand punches him right in the face. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, good on Rhysand. I wish I could punch him in the face. Rhysand is letting Feyre hold her own. Like, he's just standing there holding up Asriel with Cassian, letting Feyre fight this battle because it is. It's her battle. It's not his battle. But the second Tamlin gets close to him, he's like, poof. (laughs) (laughs) So perfect. Yep. Feyre goes back into Rhysand's arms. And now Tamlin knows that Feyre and Rhysand are mated. Is it because they're touching each other? I think because Rhysand moved and is no longer standing still and not breathing. Yeah. Okay. okay. So I think they can now smell it, especially because they're standing now together as so well. To each other. Yeah. The king starts laughing hysterically, saying that he can't believe it. Your bride left you only to find her mate. Because he doesn't give a shit. He just Mm-mm. wants Tamlin's lands. He doesn't care that Feyre once yeah. is mated with Rhysand and blah 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 and all that drama. Yeah. The king says the mother has a warped sense of humor and he is also surprised that Feyre unlocked his spell. Feyre does tell Tamlin that she's sorry and she does mean it because it's not like she went off to the night court to find someone else to date or to right. find a mate. She went there for sanctuary to get away from yeah. him after what he did and it just so happened that Rhysand was her mate. Tamlin still thinks that Rhysand did something to her. He is not (laughs) believing this mating bond at all. Delusional. But before anyone else could do anything, the doors open again and creatures and soldiers of Highburn start 
pouring into the room. Feyre looks at Tamlin and says, I'm not going with you. And even if I did, you're a spineless, stupid fool for selling us out to him. Do you know what he wants to do with that cauldron? Mm-hmm. The cauldron then appears in the room. It's like, here I am. I'm the star of cauldron. this fucking show. Did you say cauldron? Yeah, here I am. <laughs> the king says he's going to start using it right now. Feyre could hear, kill him, kill him, kill him, and she couldn't tell if it was her voice or if it was the cauldron's voice, which is interesting. Yeah. She then bursts into all of her magic using all seven cords at once, and everyone is shook. Mm-hmm. Even Tam Tam. Tam Lin probably would have passed out if he could. The king says, <laughs> You should have. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the king says, Look at you, a child of all seven cords, how the cauldron purrs. In your presence. He wants to know how Feyre was planning on using it or if she was going to destroy it with the book. Mm-hmm. Feyre doesn't say anything and he's like, oh, well, you'll tell me soon enough. And Feyre's like, I made no bargain with you. And he's like, but you didn't, but your master did, which bleh, bleh. Feyre says to Tamlin, if you take me away from my mate, I will destroy you. I will destroy your court and everything that you hold dear. Yes. Tamlin is so annoying. And he says, you don't know what you're talking about. One, what kind of response even is that? Even Lucian is like, what the fuck? Yeah, Lucian cringes. He's like, what, Tamlin? Like, what do you mean? She obviously knows what her mate is. She can fucking feel it. Yeah. The king agrees with Tamlin, though, but not for the same reason, saying that Feyre yeah. doesn't know what she's talking about because now women are walking through the door. And it wasn't just any women. It was the four remaining queens. Those goddamn bitches. The king tells Feyre, you're going to want to behave because with the queens and their guards were her sisters. They were being dragged into the room and they were gagged and bound. Done, wow. done, done. I was like, Holy shit. I did not see that coming at all. I did not see that coming at all. At all. Even this time reading it around, I'm like, fuck. That's yeah. so crazy. I kind of knew something was going to happen to them because of that whole scene where they were like, oh, you can come to Valeris yeah. or you can stay here. Yeah. And I felt like staying there was the wrong thing. Mm. But I did not expect this at all. For them to become fucking experiments. Yeah. Yeah. Not at all. Wild. Chapter 65. Feyre felt like she was in a nightmare. Aline is sobbing. Nesta looks so disheveled because it looked like she just fought them every step of the way. Yeah. We know she did. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) The king tells Rhysand he made a big mistake by going after the book because he really had no use for it. He had the cauldron. He had no interest in the book. And because Rhysan was going after it so hard, he knew he had to step in. Mm -hmm. And he stepped in by sending Jurian to the continent to befriend the queens and convince them to work with the king of Highburn. Jurian warned the queens that the night court would try to prove that Rhysan was good, but he knew who Rhysan truly was after witnessing what he did under the mountain. Mm Mm-hmm. Because that's true. Like, Jurian doesn't know Rhysand in any other capacity, really. Right. Yeah. Jurian was to tell the queens that the King of Highburn did not want to invade the continent, but to work with the queens. So he used his powers to keep their court from prying eyes, which was Asriel. Mm-hmm. And kind of proved his point to the queens that they weren't good people, that they were trying to infiltrate the mortal queen's castle to get the book. Right. Yeah. Feyre calls the king a liar and says, if you don't let my sisters go, I will slaughter. And the the king interrupts her and says, do you hear the threats and the language that they use at the night court? Fucking (laughs) manipulator. The queen (laughs) wants the king to prove the gift he mentioned. They basically do not care about any of this bullshit nonsense going back Mm -hmm. and forth between, oh, look at the night court. They're bad. Look at how great I am. I'm the king of Highburn and I did all these things for you. Like, they don't care. They just want the gift of immortality but they want proof first that it won't hurt them. Rhysand calls the queen fools. And the king says, is she? Because who wouldn't want eternal youth, a mortal queen who could reign forever? Mm -hmm. 
the ancient queen wants it to be demonstrated now. It just, she's like re-bringing them back to the actual point of why they're there. Prove to us that it's safe and that it can be done safely. Yeah. She's like, did you hear me? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't care about you guys don't fighting. Care. Yeah. <laughs> this is when we find out that Ianthe sold Feyre's sisters out to the king. Mm -hmm. That she thought that Feyre would want them with her for the rest of eternity. The king did ask the queens first, but they did have the decency of refusing, saying it was uncouth. But Ianthe had no such qualms about selling out favorite sisters. Yeah. Tamlin is shook. Shook that mm -hmm. Ianthe went behind his back and did this. The king talks about her ambitions, which Amanda mentioned earlier, about how she wants the high priestesses to rule Perithian and not the high lords. And she thinks yeah. by working with the king of Highburn that she can somehow manipulate this and work in her favor. Which I hope now Tamlin, because he heard this from the king himself, saying that she dreamed of a world, basically, or wished for a world that was free of high lords, I hope that he does not fucking remain her friend. <sighs> I hope he kills her. I hope she dies. Don't get your hopes too high, Amanda. I know. Idiots, all of them. Lucian is also shook, saying she sold out Ferris family to you. At this point, it appears that there will be no stopping her sisters from being dunked into the cauldron. Mm -hmm. The king then unleashes a horrible power into the room, which she went over earlier. That's when Cassian's wings get shredded. Reese tries to stop the king, but the king unleashes more of his power. Tamlin goes to grab Feyre again for a second time, and she hurls a knife at him as hard as she can. Yes. He backs away and is like shocked, and she readies a second knife. Moore was going to go attack the king. She has an opening, right? She's like, I'm mm -hmm. going to go kill the king for what he has done to Cassian and Asriel. But as she's getting closer to the throne, Asriel cries out in pain. So she stops. She knew that if she continued forward to try and kill him, that Asriel would be dead. Exactly, yeah. The king of Highburn then calls Moore a queen. Feyre was going to try and help Cassian, and she starts to rip off the leather on her arm. But before she could continue, the king says that they're going to put Elaine in the cauldron first. Mm -hmm. Tamlin says, stop. He's the first one to say stop. Yeah. Lucian then repeats after Tamlin to stop this. Tamlin was like, this is not part of our deal. Tamlin then launches himself at the throne as if he would rip the king to shreds. Mm-hmm. Interesting. But the king stops both Tamlin and Lucian by restraining them with power on the floor. Feyre is now begging the king to stop this. Mm -hmm. She says, aren't I proof enough that it works as well as Jurian to the queens? The ancient queen says, Feyre is a liar and a thief and conspired with their sister and her punishment should be the same as the golden queen and to consider what is being done to her sister as a gift. Mm -hmm. She's like, you could die. We could literally kill you, but we're going to just turn your sisters and let them be with you forever. So you think you can kill her though. Like yeah. you can't fucking kill her. Yeah. You're a fucking mortal. And she is the most powerful fae in Prithian now. Yeah. But alas, Elaine gets pushed down into the cauldron. Nesta is freaking out. Mm -hmm. The cauldron tips over and Elaine gets dumped out and she was pale, but alive. Her skin was glowing and she was now a high fae. Mm -hmm. You thought she was going to die. <laughs> I did think she was going to die. Only because there's so much effervescence on the strong-willed human that has to be dunked to come out. And, you know, at first in this story in Akatar, which she does change and become more of her own and more strong-willed. But in the beginning, she's just this bubbly headcanon of a kind of character who just la 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 planting flowers and enjoying her days in misery yeah, and avoiding misery or even avoiding that they're poor and stuff. So my immediate reaction was like, oh my God, she's not as strong as Feyre. She's not as strong as Nesta. She's going to fucking die. Yeah. But she survived. She, she must be stronger than I thought. She does. Yeah. The queens are excited because now they know they can survive this. Now, it's Nesta's turn. Lucian is like, 
well, don't just leave Elaine on the floor. And Cassian looks like he wants to go to Nesta but and help her, but he can't because his wings are shredded. Mm-hmm. Nesta fought every step of the way. Lucian was free to go help Elaine, but Tamlin was still bound and now had a magical gag in his mouth, which I don't think the king did. No, but we'll talk about that later. <laughs> <laughs> they push Nesta down. But one arm she frees and she points it at the king. One finger, a curse, a promise. And the king did look a little unnerved after this. Yeah. Feyre throws up. She's like sick to her stomach about everything that's happening. Mm -hmm. And then Nesta gets dumped out of the cauldron. And Feyre knew right away that she was different from even how Elaine had been made. Like she had fought even underwater and took more power than she should have. Mm -hmm. When she looked at Feyre, she was pure rage, power, and cunning. And then all of a sudden, Nesta is sobbing and rushing towards Elaine. Nesta pushes Lucian off her, saying, get off of her. Cassian is still trying to get to Nesta because he can just hear the desperation in her voice, can hear her crying, and he is trying to get to her. And then Mm. it says Lucian finally took in Elaine's face and said, you're my mate. Wild. But we have other thoughts thanks to Megan's investigation (laughs) skills on this. So we are going to revisit this topic. I mean, it could be true that they actually are. I just, I don't know. I guess we'll see. Yeah. Chapter 66. Nesta is pissed and says she is no such thing. Mm -hmm. Lucian's face is just pale as he's looking at Elaine. The king finds this all amusing and tells the queens, look, you can survive this and maybe even get a mate. (laughs) (laughs) Hop right in. You'll come out with a husband. (laughs) He's like a a used car salesman at this point. Yeah. Yeah. The youngest queen steps forward first and she was looking at all the males in the room like they were just for the picking that she could have any of them, which is just so disgusting. Yeah. Reese then turns to the king and says, if you're in the mood for making bargains, I'll make a bargain with you. And this is when Feyre has had enough. She is not going to let Reese do that. She feels like she failed them because she didn't come here to do what she was meant to do because she put the two halves of the book together. Yeah, you had to put the goddamn book together. (laughs) And she failed her sisters. That's how Mm -hmm. she's feeling right now. Mm -hmm. So she drops to her knees and starts putting on a performance of a lifetime. Mm -hmm. She got through the spell that the king put back on her so much easier this time. Mm -hmm. And white light exploded from the room. She was favorite curse breaker, spell breaker. Mm -hmm. She then broke the wards around the castle. Now all she needed to do was to give an Academy Award performance. Yes. She pretends that she broke the spell that Reese put on her, sad, crying. <laughs> she goes to Tamlin, looking horrified at Reese and saying, What did you do? Reese is playing along and says, How did you get free? This just makes me so sad. <laughs> When you read this the first time, did you see right through this? Or were you like, oh my fucking God, he really did have her under a spell? No, because I knew she said, like, all I had to do was now play my part. So I knew that's true that she was yeah. faking. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I knew it too. Yeah. When Tamlin softly says her name, she knew that she had won. Yeah. Feyre then looks to the king and says, break the bond. And Reese is like, no. And this is actually my notable line for chapter 66, page 613. No more. No more death. No more killing. I sobbed through my clenched teeth. Made myself look at my sisters. No more. Take me home and let them go. Tell them it's part of the bargain and let them go. But no more. Please. She is a fucking Oscar nominee (laughs) for this one. She won the category. (laughs) Yes. She won the category. Literally. Wild. Your Cassian had a look of understanding. Feyre knew she fully fit in with the court of dreams and dreamers, and so she would do this for them. Mm -hmm. She's trying to convey to get her sisters out, but the bond between her and Rhysand is still blocked. Tamlin tells the king to basically hurry up, undo the bond, and to let them all go. Mm -hmm. Jurian was objecting, but Rhysand says no again. And Tamlin says, I don't give a shit. 
if she's your mate. I don't give a shit if you feel like you're entitled to her. She's mine. And one day I'm going to repay every bit of pain she felt, every bit of suffering and despair. And one day, perhaps when she decides she wants to end you, I'll be happy to oblige her. Oh. Foreshadowing, but the other way around. (laughs) Yep. (laughs) Foreshadowing. Resan says no again. But she backs away until she's leaning against Tamlin's chest. Blech. Barf. <laughs> Reesan says no again, and his voice is breaking. He also is winning an Academy Award for this performance. Yeah. Bravo. Like, they have to play it off, and it probably feels so real because, mm. like, he knows what's going to happen. He knows, like, she's going to go back to the spring court and not yeah. be with him for god knows how long exactly so of course his voice is breaking he knows in this moment that she's sacrificing herself for their court and it's devastating yeah Yeah. the king points at her and she starts screaming and resand is on the ground in pain she felt like she was dying then there was a crack in her ears and then the bond was gone wow there goes her tattoo tattoo (laughs) removal (laughs) yeah It's always painful. Always. Even with magic. (laughs) Chapter 67. Feyre faints. And this was not part of her performance. No. Tamlin took off her glove on her left hand and the bargain was gone and the tattoo was gone. She was sobbing as Tamlin holds her. Ugh. Ugh. The king says to the night court, you guys can leave. She's trying to get them to take her sisters with them and more fully understands. She knows that Feyre broke these wards and she winnows and pushes Lucian and grabs both of her sisters and disappears. Mm -hmm. Reese then lunges for Cassian and Asriel and winnows out. There is no time to even say goodbye. No. But before that, they're all just looking at her with hatred in their eyes. But obviously, she knows right. that's fake, that they actually yeah. love her and that they're, they're fucking devastated for her. And that's why they probably look so angry. Yeah. Lucian is snarling at Tamlin. Get her back. But Tamlin ignores him. Mm-hmm. The queen's are about to take their turn in the cauldron and Jurian starts taunting Lucian like don't you know what Illyrians will do to her and blah 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 yeah and Feyre says you can go to hell you hideous prick and Tamlin's hands tighten on Feyre's shoulders and Lucian is just staring at her because she was not panicking about her sisters yeah nothing gets by that golden eye of his (laughs) she then turns to Lucian and says We'll get her back. Mm -hmm. But Lucian is very wary of her. He's like, "Mm, you crazy bitch. (laughs) The king wants to know where the book is and thinks that Feyre still has it. And Feyre says, you're a mistake. Mm -hmm. But which is so funny that Tamlin is still buying this like performance. Because clearly why would Feyre, broken of her curse from Resand, then say to the king, you're a mistake when it comes to the book being gone with Resand. Or maybe she's saying it like, you're a mistake. Yeah. Like, you're you're a mistake, bro. Yeah. (laughs) Like, I don't know. Don't blame me. I don't have it. (laughs) You know? Yes. But then... Not really, because Tamlin starts writing them to winnow away. Yes, and this is actually my notable line for chapter 67, page page 617. So I said to the king and Jerrion and the queens assembled already at the lip of the cauldron and hissing over who would go in first, I will light your pyrus myself for what you did to my sisters. Then we were gone. Yeah. I mean, I guess Feyre, broken from her curse from Reese, would still be fucking pissed that her sister yeah, broke up exactly. the cauldron. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Chapter 68, we get a recent point of view. I was so excited to see this. I know. I love this. They slam into the townhouse and Amran was instantly there. Amran wants to know, where is she? Moore hadn't appeared yet, dropping Nesta and Elaine to where she saw fit. Rhysan wants Amran to just take the book, but Amran keeps saying, where is she? And he knew she didn't mean more. Mm-hmm. More shows up and her and Amran are trying to heal the boys while they wait for healers to get there, doing the best that they can. Rhysan starts explaining to Amran, Tamlin offered passage through his lands 
and our heads on a platter to the king in exchange for trapping Feyre, breaking her bond, and getting to bring her back to the spring court. He also tells Amran that the king brought in her sisters to prove to the queens that he could make people immortal. The king then put them in the cauldron, and Reese explains that, that they could do nothing about it as they were turned. Reese also says that they were out of options, and Feyre knew it that she pretended to free herself from the control Tamlin thought she was under. She pretended she hated them and that she would go home if they got to leave. Yeah. And Amron's like, it's impossible to break the bond. And Reese is like, well, the king thought that he could do it. And Amron's mm-hmm. like, the king is a fool. That sort of bond cannot be broken. And Reese says, I agree. It cannot. Mm-hmm. Then he says, the king broke the bargain, but he didn't break the mating bond. Because I do have to say that even though I knew Favor was still faking it, I thought that he did still break the mating bonds when I read mm-hmm. it the first time. I thought that just loves Resan no matter what. In chapter 54, the tattoo really doesn't mean shit. Yeah. Or the bargain really doesn't mean shit. So to me, I didn't even think they touched the mating bond. Yeah, that's true. I I, think yeah. I was just like panicking. <laughs> no, yeah. The yeah. First time. <laughs> Moore wants to know if Feyre knows, and Reese confirms that she does know. And Amron's like, "Go get her right now." And Reese says, mm-hmm. "No." They are all shook. And Reese is like, "Weren't you listening to her? She said she would destroy him from within." And mm-hmm. Moore understands she is now a spy with a direct line to Reese and mm-hmm. Reese says what the King King of Highburn does, where he goes, what his plans are, she will know and report back. Amron's like, but she is your me, not your spy. Go get her. And Reese is like, she is my me and my spy and the high lady of the night court. Hell yeah. <laughs> Reese said if they ha- would have just removed her other glove, they would have seen the twin to the other, that it was inked last night. They snuck out, found a priestess, and made it official, and he named her as his high lady. Oh, I love that they actually made it official, too. Yeah. Like, it wasn't just that they decided this, and this is the way it's going to be. Like, they actually found a high priestess who blessed the partnership of her as a high lady. And that was amazing. Yeah. This is also my line for chapter 68, page 620. Resan says, not consort, not wife. Feyre is high lady of the night court, my equal in every way. She would wear my crown and sit on a throne beside mine, never sidelined, never designated to breeding and parties and child rearing. My queen. <laughs> I love that line. I mean, he was already putting her in crowns, so. I know. (laughs) Foreshadowing. Foreshadowing. (laughs) (laughs) He felt a glimmer of love shudder down the bond, and he felt relief because he knew that she was okay. Mm -hmm. Moore is like, are you telling me that my high lady is now surrounded by enemies? And Re said, she made this sacrifice for her court. And we will move when the time is right. Mm-hmm. Reese then even thinks that Elaine being Lucian's mate will help in some way. So Reese fully thinks that Lucian is Elaine's mate. So I don't know. Yeah. Reese says that he would assist Feyre in ripping apart the spring court, Ianthe, and the mortal queens. And Aaron's like, okay, so what do we do now? And he's like, we go to war. Mm-hmm. Oh! Dun, dun, dun. Which brings us to the last chapter in my favorite book of all time chapter 69 we go back to Feyre's point of view they mm-hmm. land back in the spring court we're back where we started this book Wild. she f- had forgotten how quiet it was at the manor and she is full on acting when she says I never thought I would see this place again <laughs> <laughs> She has the bond fully concealed. Mm -hmm. She is lying her ass off when she says, I remembered you. And when I saw you today, I just started clawing at the power that Resand had over me to get back to you. Oh, my God, Feyre. Encore, encore. (laughs) 
<laughs> I know. She's just giving us one performance after another. She's so good at it. Mm-hmm. Lucian is not having it, but Tamlin growls at him because he has Feyre back where he wants her. And he's mm-hmm. just going to take it for what it is, I guess. Yeah. Lucian is like, but how did you do it? How did you break the bond? And she goes, I just wanted it. <laughs> yeah. Our love is so strong. Yeah, I just wanted it so bad. I just wanted to get back to Tamlin. <laughs> Tamlin is like, are you hurt? And she's like, I don't want to remember those things. I'm free. You freed me. <laughs> yeah. But Feyre says, I want to be involved this time. No more shutting me out. No more guards. She still has so much to tell him, but... We can get my sisters back. Let me help. Yes. And this is my notable line for chapter 69, page 624. After Feyre says this to him, she's thinking to herself, help lead you in the wrong direction. Help bring you and your court to your knees and take down Jurian and those conniving, traitorous queens. And then tear Ianthe into tiny, tiny pieces and bury them in a pit no one can find. Yep. (laughs) And this is the favorite we know and love. (laughs) Yes, exactly. Tamlin does agree to her terms and that she can be involved. And he realized how wrong he had been when she was gone. And he's like, you're back home forever. And they're like, forever. Barf. Barf. (laughs) So gross. Disgusting. Lucian is not buying this bullshit at all. He is not buying this act. Mm Feyre says they let a fox into the chicken coop and she smiles sweetly at Lucian. We're a little out of order this week and Megan and I recorded our final thoughts episode before this one. So I already know how we deep dive into all the predictions and some new ones that I made from questions that Megan had for me. So I will only be adding today what I picked up on as we kind of finished our notes in preparation for this episode. And we will also mention one that Megan has for the series. Oh my God. I know. Is this your first official <laughs> prediction? Well, besides Nesta being the queen. Yeah, I think I just endorsed your. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right. Well, before we get to Megan's prediction, I do have one prediction to add to my part six predictions. I don't think that the queens are going to survive when they get dunked in this cauldron. Mm. I think there's so much foreshadowing at the end of this book that basically is saying you got to be strong willed. And to me, they're just cowards. They're just wimps. Mm. And they're just choosing to side with people to keep themselves safe instead of being actual queens and keeping their territories and the people that live in them safe. So I don't think they will survive the dunk in the tank, which is probably exactly what the King of Hybern wanted. Yeah, I think he definitely was planning on them not coming out alive. Yeah. But I'll let you take over now and tell us about your prediction. And my prediction is just because I have read all of these books and I just don't think that Lucian and Elaine are mates. I think Tamlin and Elaine are actually mates and Lucian is covering for him or for Feyre. Mm -hmm. And I could be completely wrong and that they are actually mates, but just in this book alone... Tamlin is the first one to say stop when Elaine's being dragged towards the cauldron. Tamlin Mm -hmm. lunges for the king to attack him as Elaine is being dragged towards the cauldron. Not Mm -hmm. Lucian. Like, he gets gagged by the mouth on the floor once Elaine is tipped out. I don't know. I just think there's something there. And I think- Yeah, you don't think the king gagged her. No, I don't think the king gagged Tamlin. I think Lucian did it to cover for Mm -hmm. Tamlin. Mm -hmm. And I think that Tamlin did a lot of bad things to get Feyre back, like giving up his land. And I don't think Tamlin can now say, Elaine is my mate after everything he did to get Feyre back. Yeah. Once Megan had brought this to my attention, I was just thinking about how when Lucian says that she's my mate, speaking to Elaine, Nest is like, she is no such thing. And we've already talked about this episode, how she knows best and she knows everything. Yeah. So I just feel like it really isn't true. And I think you're right. Yeah, I don't think Nest is just saying that because she doesn't want Elaine mated to just anybody. I think, I don't know, I think she actually means that. But I don't know, we'll see. We'll see if there's any other foreshadowing we see in the next book. Yes, um, in the we book will after definitely that. be keeping an eye out but for that. So, stuff. Something interesting. 
Definitely. So yes, you guys will have to tune in next week to see what other predictions we made after finishing the book Mm -hmm. and our discussion on that. But that is all we have for you today. What an epic ending to an amazing book. And I am itching to get started with the next one. We really hope you enjoyed this episode. Please let us know what you think by leaving us a review and comments on any of the platforms you are listening slash watching on or on our social media pages. This helps tremendously to get the word out and lead more listeners to find our show and tune in. Yes. Don't forget to email, follow, subscribe, rate us five stars, and tell all your friends about us. Have a blissful day. Bye. Bye. Thank you so much for listening. Join us next week for part seven of A Court of Mist and Fury by Sarah J. Moss, where we discuss our final thoughts. See you then. Bye.